Once again, for those who just arrived, as we are entering the Zoom room, we would like to welcome everyone to flourish with Filipino students facing challenges with a growth mindset webinar. I would like to request everyone to prepare yourselves for photo opportunity with our speaker later. Prepare and mute your microphone as well, and let's get your hands in you. Sit back and stay put because we are about to start in a few minutes. Our program flow, which is right in front of you, will be divided into the preliminaries, the speaker's talk, an open forum, and our closing program. First, for our reminders, the program is recorded for documentation purposes and will be shared on social media. Click the sub button to signify your consent. If the host or the host or the And ladies and ladies gentlemen. and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and this, what is up and what is popping NSTP community? I once again welcome you all to the Growth Mindset Webinar as presented by the NSTP LPS Section 1. This afternoon, we shall all flourish as we discuss Filipino students facing challenges with growth mindset. I am Kaila Sabdal. You will see this face and hear this voice throughout the webinar. So I will no longer prolong the agony and ask everyone to direct your attention on the screen for the invocation to be followed by the singing of the Pambansang Awit ng Pilipinas. Dear God, thank you for the opportunity to meet together. Please help us to come together to make this institution reflect your kingdom. Breathe life into our ideas and decisions. Help us build a team that has love and respect at its heart. 
give us the strength to continue working for your kingdom in this time of pandemic. Lord, come give us the inspiration to be the best we can be. May we be a shining example of your goodness and truth within, wherever we are. Inspire our thoughts, discussions, and ideas, and continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth for the greater glory of you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Beck. So growth and mindset are two huge words that possess wonderful meanings, all of which bring a sense of worth to all of us. Individually, these words may sound too vague or complex, and you might find yourself puzzled while flipping on pages of various self-help books. And if you guys are fond of reading Kave, Clear, and even Dweck, then you, you might resonate to these words. What really is a growth mindset? Well, I am here to host this event and to be with everyone as we all together find out the answer at the end of this webinar. At this point in time, let us all be flourished by words coming from a very blooming person in this plenary. Allow me to call on Miss Caris Emmeline M. Bautista for her opening remarks and the introduction for our speakers this afternoon. Let us all give her a warm round of applause, please. Mamka. Thank you very much, Kayla. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. So if you can just give me a few seconds to share a bit of um, the slides I've prepared to formally welcome you into this afternoon's webinar. Sige. So yeah, and so again, we selected Flourish as the theme of this webinar because, of course, our role or what is expected of us is not just to grow but to flourish, diba? Given the 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 very very fast changing climate of everything that is happening in the world, I believe that you as students, as Filipino learners, can imbibe the growth mindset and flourish and not just grow. So I also have to thank uh, one of our volunteers, uh, J.M. Celerio, for selecting this uh, theme. So once again, I'm really thankful to see you all here this afternoon. I believe we have ex exceeded my personal expectation in terms of the number of participants. And that's always a good thing to have more people here to learn more about the growth mindset. So I believe that the growth mindset is developed in school and it can and will be carried on into the workplace. Of course, as your an STP instructor and as uh, the instructor for some of the College of Management students here, I believe it is our role to prepare you for, for the, the, the roles that you will be um, taking on in the workplace. So um, 
uh, what better place to start learning about the growth mindset than the NSTP Literacy Training Service. For those who might not be familiar with this component of the National Service Training Program, it is where students are trained to teach literacy and numeracy skills to school children out of school youths and uh, other segments of society such as our adult and even our senior citizen learners so in the past semester uh, we have been brushing up on the basics of how to um how to teach and now in the second semester the students have prepared lots of proposals in order to help their learners learn and uh, we are actually taking on more than just literacy and numeracy we adapted this um we adapted this framework by the World Economic Forum on how uh, or, or what rather are the 21st century skills needed by global learners for Filipino learners in order to compete with the rest of the world, especially with the growth of globalization, the world somehow grows smaller each and every day. So we look into our foundational literacies, our competencies, even character qualities. Diba? How do we develop curiosity, initiative, persistence and grit, adaptability, leadership, uh, social and cultural awareness in our leaders, uh, in our uh, learners, in, in our students, in our student lead, uh, leaders in this class as well. So um, the last webinar that we held was more of a voters education uh, webinar so that we would be more informed as to how the elector electoral process will be um, was or will be uh, carried out. So that's part of our um, cultural and civic literacy uh, initiatives for this class. However, I know that all the members of this class have been working on their NSTPR, spending it with their learners. But I feel that the ultimate goal of this framework is to create lifelong learners, not only for UPV students, but also for the learners that our NSTP students have been teaching since the beginning of the semester. And how best to create lifelong learners is to learn more about the growth mindset. So um, uh, before I preempt what our, our wonderful speaker will be sharing with us, I would like to first introduce her. So our speaker for this afternoon is Professor Ojil Marie Q. Robles. She is the Assistant Professor of Psychology and she took her Master of Arts uh, from the University of the Philippines, Visayas. Uh, uh, Ma'am Ojil advocates for the potential of qualitative methodologies and shared reflexivity in enriching scientific inquiry and empowering various communities. Her research applies social psychological perspectives to understand people's discourse and embodied and placed experiences of health. So collaborating with fellow psychology scholars and civic organizations in capacity building and research projects has introduced her to the joys and growing pains of interdisciplinary critical health research leading to publications in international peer-reviewed journals and currently she is looking for opportunities to pursue a, a doctorate degree to further uh, these passions so nstp students uh, our learners everyone let's welcome let's give a Warm welcome to our speaker for this afternoon, Professor Ojil Marie Q. Robles. Ma'am Ojil? Hello, hello. Magandang hapon, everyone. Congratulations, Maroons. Uh, <laughs> so last night um, was indeed um, an, uh, a wonderful experience for us. No, I would say we needed it. Uh, and um, well, for me, it was a conflicting experience. <laughs> I took my master's in Ateneo de Manila University. And so I was thinking, kahit sino manalo, happy na ako. But of course, the the um, scholar in me was really cheering also for our basketball team. No? So congratulations again. And... Uh, of course, thank you so much for having me. Uh, especially to your teacher. This was, I think, weeks in the making kasi nga, uh, it was difficult to communicate. No? Dati kasi at least when we were meeting face-to-face, -face, we can just send letters in the office, ngayon sa email. No? So thank you again for your teacher no, for really 
uh, and for all of your efforts as well for organizing this conversation this afternoon. Um, and I'm very happy, of course, to interact with uh, a different set of students, no? Because I believe I have not um, met many, if not all of you, no? Because well, you are first year students, and um, it's been a while since I've taught any GEs or any subjects, no? Even with psychology majors, medyo matagal tagal na. But nevertheless, I am. Very, very happy <laughs> not to, to share this afternoon with you, especially that um, I think it's uh, the right time to talk about flourishing and more specifically to talk about the growth that we want from our students. And um, I would say no, that, um, well, because of my bias, no. <laughs> My bias as a psychology teacher, and it's also my disciplinary background. Uh, I'd like to talk about this in uh, grounding it from humanistic psychology. No? So I don't know the extent to which you have heard about it, but I would say it's very relatable. No? And this is why I chose this uh, framework to anchor our discussion of uh, the growth mindset, which we will be talking about down the line. No? So uh, before every, anything else, ayan, no? so um, that will be the title for my very, very short conversation with you this afternoon. Pero syempre, pagbigyan nyo na kaming mga teachers ninyo, no? give us this uh, opportunity to have some uh, form of interaction with you. So I would uh, like to request you to please... Um, go to this Slido link. So there are actually three options there. You can go to the link, which I will be sending here in your chat box. You can click that link. Or alternatively, you can also scan the QR code. Or the third way would be to go to slido.com and then they would ask you to input like a, a key code and please uh, encode the number 284-5425. Okay, so I will be uh, shifting windows now and we will just wait for everyone to, for the 58 of us here, hopefully majority of us would be able to shift uh, their windows or open a browser and join us in that Slido event, no? Wag kayong mag hindi yun quiz. <laughs> That's not a Slido quiz, no? It's just a very uh, simple way no, to, to check on you and to have uh, at least a grasp of how everyone is doing this afternoon since uh, we are meeting on a Saturday. And um, I'm very happy na sabi nga ni Ma'am Ninyo no, that this is more than what we have expected. Okay, so if I can just ask you to go please to this uh, as I shift my shared screen and go to that particular um, window. Ayan. Okay. So if I can just have a few affirmations, if you are already with me in the Slido. Okay. Pahingi ako ng heart <laughs> or a uh, thumbs up. Oh, ayan. Okay. So may mga ano na, no? May mga na good afternoon na. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Okay. No? So, um, you'd, you'd actually, ayan, hello, hello, kumusta? Diba? Ang tanong ko lang naman dyan, kumusta kayo? No? So, um, there are already a lot here no of responses. Excited na daw sila, okay, to learn more about the growth mindset. Buhay pa naman. Okay, some emojis here. <laughs> okay. Kumusta tayo? No? So maybe you can share in our slide though. Some of your sentiments, no? Anonym, anonymous naman. So you are free to speak your mind. Pagod na pagod na po. Yes. No? I think um, I think many of us are really trying our best to get through uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. No? So uh, for your teachers, I think we are very much with you. <laughs> Ready nang maging nutri ba? Nakawag naman sana, no? Dami daw backlogs. Nako, nako. <laughs> Hindi naman siguro kayo students ko na nagpaparinig, no? <laughs> dagat na dagat na po. Me too, okay? So let Lenny lead, of course, no? Sige. Uh, okay lang, no? We received great news uh, just yesterday that uh, our movement is just starting. Okay, tatanggapin po ba ako ng UP? <laughs> Of course, no? 
Okay. So, hello po. Ayan. Okay. So, um, I don't know, no? Parang ito yung nanonotice ko recently. It's very difficult to answer the question, kumusta? No? And, and every time we ask students, they do g- always reply with some academic-related concerns. No? But uh, I was hoping that you could also answer some um re- give us an insight into your well-being kung kumusta na ba just getting through okay just getting by through the days pwede naman no like i said every day is a victory and um later on we will learn what the value of that is pagod pero happy volunteer of course no <laughs> hindi ko na po kaya nako nako um hopefully uh, from the general Uh, mood okay, that we are coming from this afternoon in joining this talk. Hopefully, uh, this talk would be more helpful rather than being more harmful. No? And um, I hope also that this would give you that breathing space to think and feel about something else no? while we slowly move forward. Okay, umiyak daw sa May 9. Ako din. <laughs> It has been a week long crying um crying session for me but um I found comfort uh, in in looking at uh, Lenny and you know figuring out that she is doing her best to move forward no and uh, sino ba naman ako di ba para magdwell doon if the person that I wanted to uh, follow is already starting to think okay starting to think about you know what else we can do apart from our sorrow and our pain and how we can turn that into action ayan no hello hello <laughs> no so um i always do this before i start any class or any talk so please keep on sharing here i will also parang give this a uh, copy to your mom no in case you would want to use this as a material also or parang part ng documentation in your for this. No? And I hope, uh, I really hope that the talk no, or the direction that I wanted to take for this talk um, would satisfy your curiosities or even more important uh, would be to satisfy your needs. Okay? At pinag-isipan ko talaga, no? thank you for sharing those sentiments with me. Um, pinag-isipan ko talaga, if I were a student, What would I want to hear in particular in this time? No? And uh, of course, I, I already said earlier that allow me to share my thoughts coming from the discipline of psychology. No? So um, the talk about growth and flourishing, saan ba siya galing? No? At least in, in the knowledge no, that uh, we gain in the science of psychology, galing siya sa humanistic turn. Okay. The, now, the humanistic turn in psychology was a revolt against the other sciences or the earlier versions of psychology, the, the, the foundational schools of thought that seemed to only focus on the pathology of the human condition. Or meaning, in the earlier years of psychology, there was very heavy focus on what to diagnose in people, what is evil in people. Now, you hear about, for example, the work of Sigmund Freud, which tells you that these are our impulses, that we have an id. Now, you hear about the work of early behaviorists uh, saying that uh, people are nothing but a sum of behaviors and um, people can be molded into different ways. But the humanistic turn in psychology objected to that no at ang sabi ng uh, early humanists kasi uh, the human condition is the is the subject matter of psychology and as human beings we are so much more than just our mistakes our impulses uh, we are so much more than just our behaviors no and kaya humanist ang tawag kasi it's bringing back the study of the human or the entire person And so it's a movement towards the study of our strengths and virtues. And in in the humanistic turn, ang tingin sa bawat tao, we are all meaning seeking and meaning making creatures, no? That uh, when we look at individuals, we try to see the lives that they are living, the goals that we are setting, no? The the striving that we are uh, experiencing on the day to day. And as meaning seeking and meaning making creatures, we have the capacity for reflection and awakening. Hence, the humanistic turn is encouraging us to look at 
human potential. No? Where can we be of help? Whether we are psychologists, no, whatever science you're coming from, the, the agenda here is where can we intervene and help people achieve their full potentiality? And in the recent years, um, Departing from the work of early humanists na ang sinasabi, masyado kayong naging idealistic no in in suggesting that this is the path towards happiness no. Uh, the recent theorists are encouraging us to acknowledge that there's no single-minded pursuit for happiness and success. And this is also partly the reason why I wanted you to parang start with understanding saan ba galing yung humanistic turn focusing on growth no there is no linear path to growth and there's also no single suggested way to to say that every person following that a strategy for learning would always reach the desired outcome no and in the same way that there's no such thing as uh, the absolute human condition. Our quest for understanding how do we learn, how do we grow, how do we flourish, it is not happening in a vacuum. No, Rather, we understand that learning in this setup is happening in the environment, social, political, no? um, which can create different anxieties, paradoxes, and dilemmas, which are inevitable. So, um, as educators, for example, we would want to always acknowledge that students are learning within a context, and so your contexts here matter a lot. Uh, and when we want you to grow and flourish, what we mean here is that we want you to flourish given your respective environment. Now, that is not teaching you the technique to survive all situations, but rather, we want to teach you how to adapt to various situations so that when you are faced with different subjects, different uh, study tasks, no, and even life itself, no, hindi lang naman kayo studyante sa UP, di ba? <laughs> you are also uh, daughters, sons, family members, you are Filipino citizens, no? and what we want you to have uh, is this um, orientation, no? orientation towards potential and growth. No? And allow me to revisit the work of pioneer humanistic theorists. Okay, so I know that these people are not um, unfamiliar to you. No? They're very popular, no? in fact, in mainstream psychology. Many would say that Maslow and Rogers are two of the pillars of humanistic psychology. No? And, and the, the reality is these two were among the first to really direct attention away from the psychoanalytic approach, no? the study of the id, the ego, and the superego, away from the behaviorism, okay? uh, the reward, punishment, ganong orientation towards really looking at the human, di ba? At um, ang interesting kasi dito, no, throughout the the study of the theories of these two, o di ba, sikat na sikat, pag sinabi mong si Maslow, naisip natin agad sa, sa, high, sa high school subjects natin or sa, sa senior high, um, tinuturo sa atin yung uh, the self, di ba? And so isa dun sa mga frameworks, yung hierarchy of needs ni Maslow or yung person-centered theory ni Carl Rogers. But many students don't get to appreciate the fact that the life of these two theorists directly shaped the theory that they built. No. Uh, and there are lessons to be learned here, no. Alam niyo ba na ang buhay ni Abraham Maslow at ang buhay ni Carl Rogers ay patunay kung paano ka pwedeng mag-flourish. And this is the reason why they eventually in their careers as psychologists, this is the dire direction that they took. It's because their life experiences, their own struggles, their own victories provided them with the inspiration and the drive to establish the very theories that years later would still have a lot of significance. No? So um, in psychology, we, for example, we lament the life that Maslow has lived. No? Kasi napakalungkot ng buhay niya. Um, 
he came from a very disturbed family because Maslow was emotionally distant from both of his parents. Uh, yung nanay ni Maslow was uh, a very religious woman who raised her children in a very strict way. And she was very... Um, very um cold towards her own children and growing up maslow felt like he did not receive the kind of love that he needed from his parents no and his father was very strict diba alam nyo ba na si maslow pinilit siyang mag law school no and and in law school he quit because he felt like this is not the path for me i am not growing okay i'm just attending classes every day and he didn't like the kind of work that lawyers did okay he performed poorly in school no maslow was always called as someone who was mediocre someone who was put into academic probation many many times he dropped out of different colleges and later in life he even tried med school Para naisip niya, okay, baka naman uh, pwede akong ano, sa medicine. No? But then, when he realized that um, surgeons at that time no only saw people as cadavers or as organs, ano sabi niya, no, this is not for me. And he tried again. no Eventually, when he found his way towards philosophy and psychology, he started to feel like himself no in his own words. But... Unfortunately, just when he was starting to build his career, he was the chairperson of the psychology department in one university. He fell sick. Okay. And when he fell sick, Maslow spent most of his days in his bed just reading the life of other people. And Maslow started to think, that there are people who were able to make the most out of their potential. There were people whom he called self-actualizing. Okay? And alam nyo ba, in that process of reading about other people and thinking about how else he can grow and actualize in his own way, eventually Maslow recovered. Okay? And in his later years, he became the president of the American Psychological Association. Okay? And to the end of his days, Maslow's work was acknowledged not only in the field of psychology, but okay, in science as a whole. Right? How inspiring, di ba? But if you read the theory of Maslow, you would not have thought that such a sad life, you know, filled with challenges, filled with limitations, led him to becoming one of the greatest theorists, theorists that psychology has ever known. And the same is true with Carl Rogers. No, Carl Rogers had very simple dreams. He wanted to be a farmer. <laughs> he wanted to be a farmer, but he found dignity in being a farmer. He said that the most noble profession is taking care of others. And what do farmers do? Farmers take care of plants and animals. Okay? And that's what he wanted to do for most of his life. But eventually, he learned that as much as he can he can study about how to make plants and animals best develop. He can do it for people. And that's what led him to eventually focus on what conditions are necessary for psychological growth. Okay? In Carl Rogers' earlier years, he was very socially incompetent. And he even described himself as someone who is very aloof, not able to make relationships. But later in life, in his college years, for example, he was only able to ask one person ever for a date. Okay? Isa lang talaga yung nagkalakas ng loob siyang kausapin at ayain mag-date. And that person became Carl Rogers' wife. Okay? And of course, Carl Rogers himself became the president of the APA from the year 1946 to the year 1947. Okay? So, what do we see here? Okay? We see that when we look at our current circumstances, who's to say where we can take our potentials? No? Uh, if you are currently seeing, just like you know, many of us, for example, that our country is in a state of turmoil and you feel like this will hinder you from growing, then Maslow would say, I lived at a time as a Jew. Ha? Maslow is a Jew. I lived at a time when anti-Semitism prevented me from even getting into the universities that I wanted. And Rogers would say, 
I lived at a time when um, not many people were privileged enough to have an education in the first place. No? And even in their theories, okay, if we look at Maslow's holistic dynamic theory, okay, what are the lessons that we can learn from their theories? Hindi to technical. Ha? I, I, I made sure that you're going to be able to take no, something from what they said. No? Sabi ni Maslow, motivation is complex. You cannot say that for everything that you do, you will only have one motive for doing so. Your behavior can spring from different separate motives. And all of those motives are valid. What matters is they bring you somewhere. No? So I ask you now, why are you attending this webinar? Why are you taking your degree program? And why did you vote last May 2022? May 9, 2022. No? So these are questions that perhaps you would answer now with non-linear responses. No? Why are you attending this webinar? I want to learn. Okay. But if someone here is attending this out of just being required, does that limit that person from learning by the end of this webinar? Maslow would say no. Okay. In the same way that many of you might have some predicaments about the degree program that you're taking. Bakit mo ba kinuha yan? Hindi pa ako sure as of the moment. Uh, I had some idea on what it is. It sounded appealing, but I'm not sure if I'm going to stay, if I'm going to like this. No, Some of you might even say, in my own case, for example, no, I took psychology because my parents suggested it. <laughs> and I eventually grew to love it, no, in, even to the point of staying in, it, in this field as a career. Okay? And because motivation is complex, and that all of our motivations for all of our engagements have to be considered as valid and valuable, we all have a potential for self-actualization. Okay? This is Maslow's term, di ba? For the fullest development of the self. Okay? So, kung pag-uusapan natin, ano ba yung growth? Sa theory ni Maslow, ito yun, no? It's self-actualization. And maybe all of you have seen no, this pyramid. <laughs> it's the hierarchy of needs. Okay? But the interpretation here really is by theory kasi parte lang yung, yung hierarchy of needs of a bigger theory. And that is... All of your lower level needs, the satisfaction of your physiological needs, safety needs, love and belonging, esteem needs, should lead you to self-actualization. But Maslow was very particular in saying that not all people will be fully self-actualized. Even Maslow himself said in his dying days, no, sa mga huling araw ng buhay niya kasi nag-journaling si Maslow, sabi niya, I am not a fully self-actualized person, but I am proud because I was on the path towards self-actualization. Ibig sabihin, I may not be the best person that I could have been, but I was trying everything to be on my way. And the good thing about the theory of self-actualization is that it's not limited to creative and intellectual pursuits. Okay? Self-actualization or growth, no, the fullest development of your sense of self can be achieved even from your other pursuits in life. No? The fulfillment of your own potentials, the pursuance of your own interests. Okay? Sabi nga ni Maslow, a first-rate soup is more creative than a second-rate painting. Who is to say that a painting is more valuable than a soup? Okay? What we should be crediting here is that one person spent all of that effort, underwent the fulfillment of all of those needs in order to get to a place na kaya niya nang gawin ang first-rate na sopas. And who's to say na yung sopas na pinaghirapan niya hindi valuable kagaya ng isang invention in technology, kagaya ng isang world-class painting, a poem. Okay? And this is very comforting, right? Maslow is telling us that no matter how small you think your current improvements are, those are all leading you to your ultimate self-actualization. No? Maslow is saying that 
you're satisfying your daily needs. Physiological needs, sabi niyo kanina, I'm just getting by, ma'am. Sapat na sa akin yung makapag-submit lang ako, ma'am. I feel blessed that I was able to wake up this morning. Okay. T- trying my best to pull myself together and be able to attend this webinar. That is a satisfaction of some of these needs. Okay. And because the satisfaction of those needs eventually lead to your actualization, there is much to be thankful for. And of course, your potential is yet to be defined. Diba? So what are the conditions for achieving self-actualization? We must be free of constraints imposed by society and by ourselves. No? Again and again, I tell my students, when you are experiencing something, when you have to do something for a class, for uh, here, you're volunteering in this event, you're attending this talk, you participated in a campaign, you're organizing um, for a community. Remember that you are determining the extent to which you can learn from that opportunity. Okay? And that is being free from the constraints imposed by society. And sometimes, sabi ni Maslow, these constraints can come from our own inhibitions. No? So, second, for us to be able to continue okay, self-actualizing, we must be secure in our self-image and in our relations with other people and we must be able to love and be loved in return. Okay, So this is now translating what Maslow was trying to say. It's making the most out of your relationships. Okay? If you, for example, find it difficult to do something, no, there is always, according to Maslow, the num- a few people, no? A few people who matter and these very few people can allow you to experience being loved. And in being loved, again, okay, it, it puts you on the right track towards self-actualization. And third, and perhaps the most difficult to accept, no, is that we must have realistic knowledge of our strengths and weaknesses, virtues and vices. According to Maslow, this is why some people, or us, no? students, teachers, learners, find it difficult to finally reach full development. Why? Because we don't have a realistic assessment of who we are, what our strengths are, what they could be, our virtues and our vices. Okay? And so this is encouraging in a way, but also it's challenging, right? Uh, to acknowledge your own lapses to some might be a painful or difficult experience. No? And I would say the past week no, for many of us might be a reflection of that. No? We might have been thinking, what more could we have done? How many people could I have talked with? Ilang beses ko bang pinalagpas ang fake news sa timeline ko? No? Is there something that I did here that might have been? in the long run, contributing to what happened. Okay? Or maybe a realistic knowledge of our strengths can also lead us towards appreciating where we currently are. Okay? To see that the movement went beyond the purpose of campaigning. Okay? So, maliban, maliban sa hierarchy of needs, <laughs> now these are some of the life lessons that we can take from Maslow. Okay. Now we look at Carl Rogers. No? Carl Rogers put emphasis on the person. You matter in the theory of Rogers. No? In the therapeutic relationship, for example, or in any interaction that we have with one another, we are motivated by an innate tendency to actualize, maintain, and enhance the self. Ano sinasabi ni Rogers dito? We are doing something to maintain our current self. Self, but all of us are also doing things to enhance our sense of self. And if not at the moment, it exists as an innate tendency. So kanina sabi niyo, di ba? Ako ma'am, parang feeling ko, I'm just surviving day by day. Be thankful. Because according to Rogers, that is still the maintenance of the self. And we need it to exist. We need it to persist. But you still possess the potential to enhance the self. Okay. And that all of us right now, kahit na feeling natin, nagsusurvive lang tayo sa pang-araw-araw, we are actually moving towards our goals. Okay. 
Now, Carl Rogers Person Centered Theory says that our self-concept or all of those that we are aware of about ourselves. Sino ka ba? Okay. Ano ba yung mga gusto mo sa buhay? Pwede mo bang sabihin sa akin kung ano yung mga importante para sa iyo? Ano ba yung mga characteristics mo? Diba? All of those are part of your self-concept or basically how you see yourself. But sometimes, our acknowledgement of who we are does not align with our ideal self or who we want to be. Okay. So if you ask me, di ba kanina nga, parang um, when when your mom was introducing my bio note, I wrote that bio note like maybe months ago, no? just to prepare for events like this. But sabi ko pa doon, di ba, naghahanap ako ng PhD. Uh, part lang yun ng ideal self cause of the moment. no? But in my self-concept, uh, I see myself as still not being prepared to take that journey and yet i'm not letting go of that dream no i'm not letting go of of that possibility na ay pwede ako mag phd in the near future or i will find the supervisor that's fit for me or i will i will finally get the funds to educate myself or i will finally um surpass the limitations of the pandemic and have a face to face phd journey Okay. So let's ask ourselves, how do you see who you are now? Okay. And are you satisfied with who you are as a person? And how can you become the person that you want to be? Because according to Rogers, even if as of the moment, there is a disparity between your self-concept and your ideal self, sasabihin natin, I'm not yet the person that I want to become. Okay. I'm at a point in my life where I think, um, quote and quote, I am mediocre or I'm not satisfied with my grades. I'm not proud of what I have achieved. According to Rogers, there is a possibility of bringing our self-concept and our ideal self closer to one another. And that is, in the theory of Rogers, what growth is. Okay. Growth is reconciling our self-concept and our ideal self to do something so that who we are as of the moment and how we perceive ourselves will move closer towards the individuals that we would like ourselves to be. Okay. And in becoming a person, hindi naman tayo nag-iisa. Okay. The journey of self-fulfillment and growth is not a lonely journey. According to Rogers, how do we become that congruent person? We become that by receiving acceptance, love, and approval from other people. And interesting kasi ang sabi ni Rogers, ang kailangan natin, unconditional positive regard. Yung pagtanggap at pagmamahal na hindi muna tinitignan kung naging successful ba yung tao, kung magaling ka ba, kung mataas ba yung grade mo. Pero yung hinahanap natin dito, the kind of affirmation regardless of your condition or behavior. And Rogers likened this to the kind of love that our parents may have given us when we were children. We made a lot of mistakes, pero sana, sabi ni Rogers, if we had healthy childhoods, our parents, instead of punishing us, focused on complimenting us and teaching us. So how do you give this to other people? You say, this can be improved, but your efforts were commendable. We were not able to convince all, but we were able to change the lives of some. Regardless of the outcome, okay, you affirm what the person did in an effort towards becoming or attaining the goal okay, that that person initially set out. And finally, when we receive that amount of affirmation from other people, we will be able to give that same acceptance and approval towards ourselves. So ang ganda ng theory ni Rogers kasi ang sinasabi niya, you need to be in an environment where people are supportive of you and give you the freedom to make mistakes. Okay? Growth then happens when you make these errors, when you don't necessarily succeed in the first few tries, but you are surrounded with people who would tell you 
it's okay because you tried. It's okay because you learned something from making that mistake. And in receiving that, we become the very person that we would like to be. Okay. So what can we learn from the life and work of Maslow and Rogers? We all have the potential for growth. Okay. How do we grow the satisfaction of our different needs enables growth? Okay. Whether those are your basic needs, your social needs, diba? your esteem needs. And finally, we thrive. We flourish through supportive relations, environments, and enriching experiences. Years later, these insights from Maslow and Rogers will be taken up by Carol Dweck and other educational researchers. Carol Dweck is actually an educational psychologist. No? And Carol Dweck said that what we all must have is the growth mindset. No? And this is contrary to what she called as the fixed mindset. Now, this is actually very new to me as well. No, I actually had to read kasi sabi ko, ay, ito yung gusto nilang i-discuss namin. No? And so, I, I realized slowly that, ah, this is actually an outgrowth no, of the humanistic, um, humanistic tradition. No? Where sabi ni Carol Dweck, how we see ourselves, how you perceive your own abilities plays a key role in motivation and achievement. So it's not just your actual level of skill, your actual abilities, your actual opportunities, but rather it has a very subjective element. It's your own mindset, how you see your own self. Your abilities, your capacities, diba? And that is a more determining factor into the various outcomes or the various goals that you would like to achieve. Now, what is the growth mindset? The growth mindset is where you believe that talents can be developed. Okay? That there is no such thing as being born with something. There's no such thing as being limited by what you are given with at the beginning. Rather, the growth mindset acknowledges that all of these abilities can be developed. How? Through hard work, good strategies, and input from other people. Okay. And you value effort and you perceive your ability as a malleable skill. Kanina sabi ninyo, ma'am, tutuloy pa ba akong UP? Tatanggapin pa ba ako sa UP? Magsusurvive ba ako sa UP? These are actually symptoms that many of us might be stuck in the fixed mindset or you believe that your talents are innate gifts or rather you believe that where you are now is all that you can be that your level of skill your amount of learning no that all of those are stagnant when in fact they are not okay? and having a growth mindset also is very attitudinal and motivational you need to worry less about looking smart and put more energy into learning okay and I am not, I am not, you know, I'm not gonna be a hypocrite and say that I have this. Parang this is actually also a reminder no, to me that um, because life is an endless journey towards learning and growth, diba? And perhaps along the way in trying to be excellent, in trying to be honorable, we are starting to forget okay, that uh, all that we are doing is also an effort towards growth. Okay. So, diba, um, I teach a lot of research subjects, no? and I noticed that students, when you give feedback, na they discourage. No? So, we try to be as kind as possible. We try to be as facilitative. I give multiple chances. O, sige, i-revise nyo. Okay lang yan. Kaya pa yan. Okay, i-improve natin to. Hindi muna ako magbibigay ng grade. Right? Um, what are we trying to foster here? No, We're trying to let you understand that in every opportunity, what we must focus on is the actual learning process and not so much about the concern for the possible evaluation or the possible quality of the outcome. Okay. And even more so that you approach every challenge in your academic life and in life itself, you approach it with this growth mindset. Okay. Now, it's very interesting also because related to the growth mindset is the construct of grit. Okay. Um, people would ask me, for example, no, how, 
I might have overcome a lot of my own difficulties in life. I would say it's by grit and grace. No, Grit is what? It's defined as trait-level perseverance and passion for long-term goals. Okay, It is the ability to foresee and stay steadfast towards the achievement of those long-term goals such that even if along the way you encounter difficulties, you encounter mishaps, you're able to continue pushing forward okay? because you acknowledge that all of these small steps are towards the goal that I have. Okay? And did you know that grit predict, predicts achievement? in challenging domains over and beyond measures of talent. So tama pala yung sinabi nila no na mas valuable ang pagsisikap. <laughs> That's true no even in studies for example consistently grit is associated with academic achievement, with academic excellence no no matter what the what the operationalization is. And mind you, grit can be developed as much as the growth mindset can be learned. Okay? So developing the growth mindset entails that for all of us, between teachers and students, to student to student, no, and you to your own self, that we reward not just effort, but rather learning and progress. Okay? Certainly, effort is key to any achievement, diba? but it's not the only thing. Okay? We need to make sure that our efforts are leading us to some form of learning and is giving us the progress that we want. Okay? To emphasize that the processes that yield these things, such as seeking help from others, trying new strategies, capitalizing on setbacks to move forward effectively, these are what we are actually rewarding. Okay? For example, if you find a subject difficult okay, and you fail an exam, you did not do well in a test, okay? How do you approach that with a growth mindset? It is not telling yourself that it's okay to fail this. It's okay to keep on cramming. It's okay to keep on having the same scores. No, it's not that. No, that's not the kind of comfort that you give yourself. Rather, what you tell yourself is, I got this score because I did something. This score is but an outcome of a series of circumstances within and beyond my control. Now, within those circumstances that were within my control, what could I have done so that this outcome will not happen again? That is the growth mindset. Okay. So if you acknowledge, for example, that this happened because I might have needed to study more. I might have needed to consult my teacher. Okay? I might have needed to let my parents know that I'm having a difficult time in my studies and I shouldn't be pressured as much as I currently am. No? These are the small things, no? questions that we get to ask ourselves. No? The moment that we focus on learning itself okay? and not fixate on the outcomes. And I think many of us, because we were thrown into that remote learning setup, diba tinatry natin to eh? <laughs> no, it's actually a matter now of making it a habit. Okay, so, for example, I'd like to commend students, di ba? Um, because in the beginning, sobrang hirap talaga. But now, they've developed you know, ways to improve on their own. Na parang dati, pinipilit ko pa silang mag-consult, pinipilit ko pa silang mag-research kasi kayo gumawa kayo ng review of related literature so that your paper is better. Now, they're doing it on their own. No? This means that they have that growth mindset that if this did not work before... I will not say that I'm a failure and that's it. What I'm going to say is this didn't work, so let's try something else. Okay. Also, in developing the growth mindset, remember that it's not about hiding our lapses. It's not about putting those gaps in the back door. Diba? What we're trying to do is acknowledge the truth about our current achievement, then 
together do something about it. So as educators, our goal also is not to tell you that you're doing a good job unconditionally without letting you know what should be improved. Okay? Feedbacking, kayo din, di ba? When you create projects eventually, whether those are educational projects, uh, initiatives for learning, you have to give realistic feedback. Only then can you let the person understand, ah, this is what I need to work on. And we don't stop just by telling the person that this has to be improved. The next thing to do is to work together okay, to change that. Diba? Okay. I know na yung thank you, hindi pa last slide. <laughs> Sorry, okay? So the growth mindset, instead of saying, I'm not good at this subject, what we actually have to um, develop is telling ourselves, I'm not good at this subject, not yet. Okay? Perhaps by the end of taking this course, I'll be much better than how I started. Instead of telling ourselves, not everybody can solve that problem, you can say, if I try other ways, I'll be able to solve this too. If I seek guidance, okay, if I do something else, okay, I can also accomplish this. Instead of saying, I'm not going to take that subject because I will get a low grade, what we actually have to foster is the thinking that you will take that subject because it gives you an opportunity to learn. Okay? That the grade will only be the assessment of your learning. Your goal is to learn and not to get a grade. Okay? And finally, don't say, this is just not one of my strong areas. What you can say is that, but there are things that I can do to improve. Okay? This is, again, prioritizing that growth mindset versus that fixed mindset. Okay? So that actually ends no, the, the thoughts <laughs> that I would like to leave with you. Okay? So I think we have some time. Hindi ko alam kung nag-overtime ako. Malamang, no? <laughs> But yeah, if we do still have some time to ask questions, I'm sorry for disturbing the program. But I do hope that we achieved something <laughs> in that uh, very, very um, brief sharing. No, So um, I will also be glad to share the references with your teacher so that she can also uh, disseminate with you, including this PowerPoint, if you would want to keep a copy of it. Okay. Ayan. So you're very, very welcome. Thank you for being patient. No? So maybe I can just stop uh, sharing my screen now. Okay, And we can have those questions if you have uh, any, <laughs> if many. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Mom. I personally enjoyed the talk. Po and, you know, I there's a lot of things that I took away, like, you know, being proactive with the difficult situations, understanding that growth is really mm -hmm. incremental to always begin with the end in our mind as we try to reconcile our self-concept and ideal self that, you know, growth is also influenced by our environment and how important focusing on the process really is much more than how we hold on to the output or the end goal. And also, I have come to realize that growth mindset also can be projected in the questions we ask ourselves, like in doing things. For one, I would ask, am I doing this to learn or to be a learner? Or am I doing this to, to just read, to keep reading? Or do I want to culture myself to be a reader? And I think these are like the things, lofty questions are things that, are really things that add up, add up us, to, us to our, you know, to our, you know, culturing ourselves, culturing ourselves. For I think nage echo ang ating, ang ating tech for a while. But of course, um, at this juncture, the, Op the floor is open for questions from our NSTP community. So should you wish to ask, you can raise your hand or drop your question in our chat box. And um, I think we have one question. And I, you mentioned earlier, I think it was part with, with Carl Rogers' um, theory that our external environment is important in growth and that unconditional love is what pushes us 
to uh, what pushes growth to happen. So happen. the question is, how do we actually deal with toxic environment? Like considering that we are in an online setting and these things are really, um, you know, inevitable, especially dahil lahat tayo na sa bahay. So there might be, you know, problems na nagpa-prosper sa nagsasurface sa bahay. So what is really the best thing to do to allow, to not allow the situation to get into our system or to get in, into ourselves po? In the theory of Rogers, there are different levels of awareness of our reality. Okay? And ang sabi ni Rogers, nagiging problema siya if we don't accurately represent reality in our awareness. So, nang ibig sabihin, no, um, minsan we distort reality, sometimes we deny reality, and this is not in the hallucinogenic way. Ha? Parang, um, we don't provide ourselves with the accurate representation of what's happening. So, that's the first step. No, to to acknowledge, give yourself time, okay, to realize kung anong nangyayari. So it's actually practically speaking, it's taking a few moments every day. If you are in a very stressful environment, it's taking a few moments to talk to yourself and assess, okay, this is what's happening. I'm getting overwhelmed. Why am I overwhelmed? That's the next question. Why am I overwhelmed? It's is it because of my um, something in my family is it because of um is it because i'm too um exposed to the internet is it because uh, i'm overwhelmed with this particular academic tasks okay so after talking to yourself and at least having some answers to those questions that's when you start to cope with the situation diba? that's when you can start doing something about it okay because if you don't no exercise that kind of mindfulness no minsan kasi yung nagagawa nating coping hindi siya akma doon sa situation okay for example no um if your problem is um beyond your control okay and you struggle so much to still be in control you feel disappointed okay because you thought that there's something else that I can do to solve this problem. May magagawa pa ako, but the reality is, wala na. It's beyond your control. Okay? So, a better way to cope in those situations would be emotion focus. Parang, damdamin mo yung emotion, okay? Target the management of the emotion instead of the problem. For example, ako ha, hindi ko alam kung ganito din sa inyo. I have relatives who have politically different views no and it stresses me out so much what did i do in the beginning i found ways to try and convince them i talk to them every day to a constant effort no radical na pagmamahal I believed in it so much, no. Not only because I believed in Lenny as a candidate, but because I am a psychology teacher, no. I believe in people giving them a chance. But eventually, when these very relatives are not responding, no, I had to realistically accept that. And instead of dwelling on the problem, no, I told myself, this is not within my control anymore. Okay. So, okay, detach tayo. Or if you're feeling overwhelmed every day, maybe the problem is not only because of everything that's happening, but because it's the constant awareness of everything that's happening. Kasi masyado tayong napaparami ng scroll sa social media. Okay. It's because our chat boxes are constantly pinging left and right. Okay, so what can you do? Limit your social media usage. Okay, hindi ko sinasabing wag ha. Now is not the time to be silent. But what I'm saying is if you are distressed, disconnect. Okay, so I hope that parang that answers no, that question. And like, how do you actually deal with those toxic conditions? Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ram. I think, yeah, like you asked earlier, I think lahat na most of us really struggled with, with the political you know, side of things for the past few months. And it's really, really important to take a step back and try to look at the situation in, in a more... Uh, no, in a more general manner. So her, her, there's a question in the chat box and allow me to read it. Lamang po, ma the question is, um, a member of this plenary asked that his grandmother 
his grandmother asked na in what aspect could their minds grow even if they are already old? Um, is it too late for them because his grandmother is currently 68 years old po? Hey, nako nanay, no? Hello po. I don't know if your grandmother is listening right now. But um, scientifically speaking, we have two forms of intelligence. Kasi mind ang pinag-uusapan, di ba? So let's talk about it in terms of intelligence po. Meron kasi tayong... Uh, fluid and crystallized intelligence. Yung crystallized intelligence po na, yun lang ang sinasabi nilang naaapektuhan kapag nagkakaedad tayo. Pero ano lang po ba yung crystallized intelligence? It's the amount of information that you can retain. But what do we retain for a lifetime? Ano yung hindi naaapektuhan ng edad? It's our fluid intelligence. What we do with knowledge. So there's actually no limit to what you can learn. Because in your lifetime po, you already have acquired so much knowledge. And growth can still come from the knowledge that you've had. Using it in different ways. Challenging those existing knowledges. Applying it into different situations. No, So mahirap siguro yung pag-memorize. Mahirap pa yung um, pagbabasa ng mga... Content heavy, di ba? Pero for example, the, the simplest things no, can still be learned. Okay? Um, I would say no, that the plasticity of the mind, um, the limitations of that, no, hindi na kasi yun black and white, no, yung, yung debate ng um, nature versus nurture. It's already proven that intelligence is a constantly developed skill. And in the same way, your minds no, can still learn. No? Whether we, ano ba yung operationalization natin ng mind? Whether it's intelligence, it's perspectives, okay? or kahit na skill. Okay? I would say even, no, siguro yung skill, yung limitations lang, our bodies no, would, would be the limits for that. But with what your mind can do, no, um, realistically speaking, uh, there's still a lot of possibilities. No? So um, maybe if we're bringing it to the conversation of the growth mindset, no, um, perhaps the question would be, First, uh, what are the goals that you'd like to set for yourself? No, And there are different ways to reach that goal, no, that learning outcome. There are different ways to achieving it. Maybe some ways hindi na masyadong effective kasi iba-iba naman. Eh. It's not just age. Okay. Sometimes it's also parang a person's uh, span of attention. Sometimes it's also a person's interest. No, So uh, really, um, I would advise against parang saying no and even thinking that for ourselves no, that uh, those limits exist because um again no the the actual use of knowledge no the the arguing for what is right um standing up for what we know is right no and even um telling no telling the stories that must be told these are the matters that we keep no until the end of our lifetimes okay and i think no a uh, uh, a best the best uh, demonstration for this would be how valuable the older members of our different communities are hindi lang academic communities ha isipin ninyo uh, syempre yung mga pinakamababangis ninyo na professor yung mga medyo may edad na no but think about your own communities di ba kanino ba tayo tumatakbo kapag may gusto tayong itanong kapag may gusto tayong malaman don't we seek the wisdom of the old okay and because um the wisdom there perhaps no is because not just of what we learn in school but it's life experiences no that gave them that wisdom Okay. So, hello po. Yes, ayan. Thank you so much for answering that. And thank you also for asking the question. I think it's really it's really a nice question. And also, yun na nga, gaya nga ng sabi ni Mom, that our narratives is also really important in trying to build our mindset kahit pa kung anong ilang taon pa naman tayo. Um, Mom, we also, another question po, uh, we consider na parang we all have different upbringings that you said earlier, we are meaning seek, seeking creatures. And aside from that, we are all walking projections in the world and magkakaiba-iba talaga tayo. So the question po from the chat is, 
what if a current system of a lifelong learner is not necessary, necessarily supportive of a growth mindset? Like, for example, yung mga perfectionists, yung na mga groupmates, na mga leaders, na mga bosses and companies. So how do lifelong learners continue to develop a growth mindset when near perfection is, you know, expected? Mm-mm, no, um... If you actually read further doon sa work ni Carol Dweck, sabi niya, now that we know that people can have a growth mindset, the next thing that we should develop is a growth culture. Okay. At ang growth culture ay hindi lang na- nabubuo ng isang tao, unfortunately. No? And I think eh, this is also part of a realistic assessment of our current situation. Okay. Um, that in organizations, in our university, no, um, we might have, we might have systems and practices that are in fact discouraging or to some extent even oppressive to people who are trying to have a growth mindset. Okay. Um, <laughs> Siyempre, no, teacher din ako. I understand na minsan din kami, di ba? May mga requirements na binibigay na um, we don't Some of these we just give because we need to calculate your grades, no? Parang now then, if we want our students to be a, to be comfortable with yung sinasabi natin, the growing pains of learning, di ba? Na hindi dapat ganun kadali. Actually, meron kasing ano eh, meron kasi kami tinatawag na different forms of assessment, no? That um, the things that you do in class, the activities, exercises, even quizzes, They don't always have to be recorded. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you can do it just to learn. No, we don't have to give a number to pressure you to parang kailangan passing score. Just it's an assessment of what you've learned so far. Okay? And maybe sa first try mo okay, not graded. Sa second try graded, no. And in your case, I really believe that the first thing that you should do is speak up about it. Okay. Um, naalala ko yung kwento ng kaibigan ko uh, a few weeks back. Parang sabi niya, I dropped out of a class. Sabi, uh, this is grad school. Imagine PhD ha. Um, I don't know no, if you have some expectations, pero it still happens in grad school. It's normal, no? Um, sabi ko sa kanya, bakit ka nag-drop? Sabi niya, I'm not learning from this kind of teaching. Or I, I'm, I'm, I've already tried telling my teacher na pwede po bang um, ganito no? or can we have a bit more time to digest. Pero kasi sabi niya, ayaw mag-adjust kasi PhD daw. Dapat daw ano, ganito kami. So sabi niya, it's a matter of vocalizing. No? Telling, telling, no? telling the person that this is not working for me. Okay? And eventually, sabi niya, nung nag-drop ako, it's also... A gateway to letting myself find better opportunities where I can learn. Now, in your case, of course, realistically speaking, hindi naman siguro yung parang idadrop nyo lahat ng subject na mahihirap, no? I think it's always a good place to start a consultative relationship with your teachers, no? Or with your parents, even. Um, I don't know the extent to which you actually talk about things at home. Um, if it's difficult for you to share these things, but I always believe that norms begin in practice. Parang kung sisimulan mo siya at tuloy-tuloy na, magiging normal siya sa bahay ninyo. And if you feel like some part of what's happening in your home is not helpful to what's happening to you, it's best to tell your parents about it, no? Be open about it. And then let them know from your perspective what's actually happening. Because we're all human eh. To be human is to assume. Parang your parents are also assuming on their end and you're also assuming na pag sinabi ko to hindi ako iintindihin ng parents ko, ganito, ganyan, no? And um, when that, no? When that, works then good for you and if it doesn't anong sabi ng growth mindset we find other ways diba and i would testify no to to um friends who found refuge in um kahit na mahirap no for example sa bahay no i appreciate that they look for social support in other ways para um kinaka sa ibang friends no or talking with their fellow students no but um i think as of this moment no the, the most practical and doable step for you is to begin talking about those concerns no to start 
being vocal about it. Kasi, um, we might have been raised to learn that being silent is equal to being respectful and that being vocal is equal to being disrespectful. But uh, it's not what you say, actually, it's how you say it. <laughs> Both ways yon ha. Parang minsan din our, our family members want to say something, but they can't say it in a better way. So you don't understand one another. No? So um, it's also the same thing with uh, eventually, no, with your uh, teachers. No? That's what I always say. Parang maintain an open communication no, with uh, your professors because... Um, itigil na natin yung thinking that in the classroom there is a hierarchy. There's not. <laughs> no, um, at least no in in what in the University of the Philippines, what we want you to understand is we don't have a power differential, but we maintain respectful relations. Okay, parang hindi namin sinasabi that your teachers are superior than you. What we want you to understand is we are here, uh, and what we want to do is to learn. Okay? Not by dominating each other, but by helping each other, but with respect in place. And it's the same uh, principle no, when you are dealing with these circumstances at home. Okay? Ayan. Thank you again, Ma, for, for answering the question. And thank you also for the person who asked the question. I think guilty din naman ako sa... Nga, to assume unless proven wrong, laging na bottle up yung mga things and, things, and I really think that's important to really open up. Um, there is another, I think we are down to two questions, ma'am. So, the, the, another question is that how does the growth mindset help us deal with disappointments not necessarily related to learning? So, hindi na siya academic siguro sa mga love life nila, sa mga nakikinag ngayon. So, how do we actually deal with that po, ma'am? Okay, so, hmm, ano ba yung disappointment, no? Disappointment is that unpleasant feeling that you get because something that you would have wanted to happen did not happen. Totoo yung, you know, the, the common saying that disappointment comes from expectations, okay? And uh, how does the growth mindset help us with that? Again, when we look at the process, no, na disappoint tayo dito sa outcome, Okay. We look at what led to this outcome. And instead of continuing being disappointed with the outcome, why don't we look at the process and see what else can be done so that we can achieve a different outcome? Or, if it already happened, how can we make the most out of this? Okay. At dito napapasok yung, di ba, sabi natin, uh, if you want to be an actualizing person, part of that is realizing your own mistakes. Um, being okay with the fact that you made a mistake and um, identifying that I could have been better. I could have um, studied more. No? Uh, and sa totoo lang ha, disappointment is even more painful when it's towards yourself, right? Parang to be disappointed with other people, it's easier to detach with that um, feeling. But when you're disappointed with yourself, parang it's more difficult to manage. And to that, I think the growth mindset is even more helpful, no? Kapag sarili mo na. Kasi pwede mong i-reframe, eh. Pwede mong sabihin na this is not a state of finality, parang pwede mong isipin na, okay, trial one. I can try again. Okay? Or pwede mo ring sabihin na, okay, method A, hindi pwede. Let's try method B, method C, method D. Okay? Um, kasi sa totoo lang, ha, disappoint, disappointments are, sabi kanina, di ba, sa humanistic approach, parang we want to be positive about the human condition. But to be positive about the human condition does not mean that we only look at moments of happiness. <laughs> no, it means that um, to be positive about the human condition, we acknowledge that there is meaning in the pain. There's meaning in the disappointment. There's meaning in grieving. Okay. And kailan ka lang truly talo quote and quote talo ka if you did not get anything from it okay talo ka if you thought that it was a waste okay talo ka if you think um that's the end of it right and so turn your 
<laughs> turn your disappointment, no, whatever that is about, no, turn your disappointment into an energy for action. Okay, which is very much possible naman, no. Um ginagawa niya 'di ba? Pag uh, okay, um mababa tayo sa first na test o bawi tayo sa next one or hey, this relationship did not work. Why did it not work? Is it because we're not with the same goals, parang gusto ko serious sa relationship na to, wala akong magagawa, the other person is not yet ready to commit. Okay, so wala, eh di maghahanap ako ng ibang person who is willing to commit in the same level as I do. Or maybe right now, it's really just the circumstance. Ang hirap mag-LDR, pandemic, ganta ganyan. So, I think that the growth mindset in focusing on the processes no, helps us deal with those disappointments. Okay, so yawn. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. I hope the question really was answered by the person who asked it. But may last down, we're down to last question. And allow me to read it. It's from our chat box po. Um, the last question is galing naman sa Lolo, ng isang member natin dito. Sabi Hello po, Lolo. Hindi <laughs> na kay Lolo. Ngayon naman kay Lolo. Sabi po ni Lolo, na mamana all... Nasa lahi po ba talaga yung talino at kaalaman ng isang tao? He just really wants to be clarified with it po. Hmm. Ah, uh, karuin po natin yung namamana ay um in genetics po kasi no. Ang na ang na, napapatunayan pa lang ng siyensya, ang namamana ay IQ or yung tinatawag po nating intelligence quotient. Kung gagawin ko pong analogy lolo, yung IQ po natin para lang siyang starting point, no? At hindi po determinant or hindi sole reason um, ang IQ para sa katalinuhan ng tao. No? So, for example po, merong mga pag-aaral na kambal. No? Ang meaning po, kambal sila, sobrang lapit ng genetics nila. No? Pero tong kambal na to, yung isa, parang pinalaki siya sa very enriching environment, maraming learning opportunities. Tapos yung isang kambal, unfortunately, medyo deprived. No? Itong mga pag-aaral po na to, na, na, napatunayan nila na hindi lang, no? hindi lang sa genes natin o sa napapamana natin nanggagaling ang katalinuhan. Mas nanggagaling po ito sa karanasan. No? Kasi po ang... ang ang learning naman no uh, or or ang um, knowledge building um ay nangyayari because ang tao na expose sa impormasyon no whether nababasa po natin sa libro, naririnig natin sa school or napag-uusapan natin no nakikinig tayo sa ibang tao and yung impormasyon po na yon ang ginagamit natin para bumuo ng kaalaman o katalinuhan no uh, pero po um kung iisipin natin yung tanong po siguro kung bakit parang um, nagdududa tayo, eh meron naman kasi mga mga pamilya na kung titignan ko, ay naku lahat doktor, namamana talaga siguro yung pagiging doktor. Or namamana talaga kasi tignan mo yung ate niya, top notcher, yung, yung bunso nila, magdodoktor na, yung pamangkin, mag engineer Kapag po mga ganyan, hindi po actually genes lang. no Yung nangyayari po kasi siguro sa bahay nila, grabe yung kultura ng learning no nasa bahay nila for example uh, nakasanayan nila na ay bibigyan natin ng chance na mag-aral yung bata no minsan din po opportunities okay um, um there are really children who become more intelligent because um they're privileged no to have for example uh, maaga pang nakapag-enroll sa school no advanced kasi nga 3 years old pa lang pinapasok na natin sa ano di ba sa uh, daycare na maganda yung teacher no so hindi lang po namamana yun yung 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 sagot siguro hindi rin po kasi natin pwedeng i-eliminate totally yung factor ng genes no kasi po um lahat naman no sa sa mga kapasidad natin yung yung pagbubuo po kasi ng katawan natin or sa katalinuhan yung composition ng brain um, much of it po kasi talaga yung biological makeup niya at saka yung anatomical makeup um Namamana. <laughs> no pero yun nga no hindi lang kasi yun ang sole determinant ng katalinuhan okay so siguro kung gusto natin di ba um i think ang ang magandang tanong dito kung 
paano po ba, ma'am, kung ako gusto ko yung mga anak ko o yung mga apo ko, ganyan, may growth mindset. No, I think it's more of how we raise our children rather than what genes we give our children. No, paano natin pinapalaki yung bata. Okay? Very developmental psych, pero yan. <laughs> Pero maganda yung tanong ha, kasi nga ba diba, yan iniisip natin minsan, parang um, am I, ano, am I, am I determined by my genes? You're not. <laughs> no, you're not determined by your genes. Okay, so yan, depende pa din sa learning experiences ninyo. Ayan. Sorry, I have to ask one last question. Ha? <laughs> Sige ma'am, Ojil, uh, kasi ba diba, we, we uh, some of the students have like group Um, group requirements that they need to uh, fulfill. So parang yung iba kasi doon doon talaga nagkakaroon ng opportunity to to stretch their patience, I guess. So parang if for example, um there are student leaders here present in this this class, uh, how would how would these student leaders best um encourage or introduce introduce first before encouraging the growth mindset in the people or the students that they lead as well? Yes, no. Thank you for that uh, question, ma. Uh, you know what? When you lead, you don't want people to depend on you. <laughs> And I think that's where the problem starts, no. A lot of us have a notion of leadership as though it is uh, purely obedience, no. Try this parang Try the kind of leadership that is transformational and member-oriented. Meaning, when you want people to, to achieve the same goal as you, kasi ganun naman ang leadership, di ba? To lead people towards a goal, no? So, um, you have to let them first, no? Do what they are good at, okay? kapag kasi ano no kapag kasi mga group work no yun yung reality kasi you're starting off with where everyone is good at no the skills of your members are your greatest capital okay but if you have a long life as a group parang tino for simo na na ay magtatagal kami dito or we will develop this group ganon or we will stay with this community and our goal is to lead this community into further development what you have to do is develop and capacitate the members In developing and capacitating your members, you acknowledge that eventually you will have to lead less and less and less. That's actually a sign that you're doing a good job. Okay? Because in the beginning, when everything is still unstructured and disorganized, as a leader, your job is to provide that structure. Oh, magde-delegate muna ako ha. Oh, sige, ako gagawa ng outline ha. Pero next time or sa next step, kailangan kayo na. You have to let them do it okay, in order for them to learn it and then eventually when things are going better learn to detach no and hindi lang naman kasi ang leadership about sa kumbaga the analogy is uh, hahawakan mo yung kamay no ng members mo and you're gonna treat them as robots or puppets no and you know um that's your way of leading them no Eventually, when you are a truly transformational leader, you have already empowered your members to function well, even with minimal to no guidance. Okay, and I think um, ganon din naman yung magandang practice, no? Kung uh, eventually, di ba you you ano you you have teammates, no? Or you have work, no? Pero ako talaga, I would advise that um, when you're doing this parang group work, no? Um, Create a sense of shared responsibility. In the beginning, before you even jump into those tasks, parang you talk to each other and tell each other, ano bang gusto nating mangyari dito? Ikaw, gusto mong pumasa, di ba? Ako din, gusto kong pumasa. Siya din. Okay? But maybe, that's not just it. Maybe you tell each other, gusto natin ng magandang research, di ba? Hindi lang dahil sa grade. Gusto natin proud tayo sa research natin by the end of this. Okay, so magkukomit tayo. No? At hindi dahil naglilid ang isa, the others would have a sense of parang walang ownership over it. no So when you have that shared responsibility and mutual ownership over whatever you're doing. Okay. And siguro the last advice would be, kasi hin- ano din, eh, parang hindi... Hindi na iiwasan talaga na minsan may mga members na relatively less involved, no? Or there are members who 
um, don't um, necessarily who don't necessarily have the same motivation as the other members no so in those cases um, what we would like to emphasize is that when we are doing something as a team we are all experiencing our own limitations one might be quiet about it the other might be very vocal about it the other might be um just not acknowledging it no but the the reality is you have to be fair in saying that we are all experiencing difficulties no so if others are having a more difficult time you have to respectfully let us know okay hindi yung parang um gagawin nating burden sa isang tao lang no so what happens is if one member cannot contribute distribute new responsibility so that it won't be too heavy on the leader or too heavy on one member okay but the point is again leading is about uh, capacitating your members and not making them dependent on you yeah Thank you so much for that. I think we've exhausted all the questions. Na. And really, that's really important, especially for us. Na marami talaga mga group works. It's important for us to own, to co-own, and co-create whatever there is right in front of us. So thank you so much, ma'am, for answering all the questions. I think it's really, really timely for every one of us here in the plenary. So now, I think ma'am Ka is already here. So we will now go on to the awarding of certificate for our speaker. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Robles, for that very enlightening talk. Parang my personal takeaway is that um, diba, efforts are valued and that ability is really malleable. So parang doon pa lang, when we acknowledge that, I think that is really where the growth begins. And so I would like to award this certificate of appreciation to uh, our speaker for this afternoon, Professor Ojil Marie Kirobles, for sharing her expertise and knowledge as a speaker in the webinar entitled Flourish, Filipino Students Facing Challenges with a Growth Mindset. So given this 14th day of May 2022, via the, the online platform Zoom, signed by Dr. Philip Ayan P. Padilla, Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Professor Nathaniel G. Samson, NSTP Director, and yours truly as the NSTP LDS Section 1 uh, Instructor. So, ma'am, thank you very much for spending a good part of your afternoon with us. Thank you, thank you. I learned as much as you. <laughs> Salamat. Ayon. I hope everyone is flourished from the very refreshing talk a while ago. And given that, I request to see everyone's flourished faces and smile naman together with our speaker. So I'll ask everyone to please um, turn on your cameras para makita naman natin kung gaano ka-flourish na nga ba ang ating mga itsura para sa hapong ito. Ayan. Let's wait for the others to turn on their camera, of course. Um, while their internet will allow them to. <laughs> Ayan. Wag na mahiya. How about the others? Let's wait for a little while para sa iba. And I think, uh, okay po, sige, sige. We'll wait. We'll wait kina Lolo and Lola. How, um, we ask the others to kindly, um, <laughs> Nagbibihis pero kindly turn on your cameras para naman we can get a souvenir from, from this talk this afternoon. Okay, the others are slowly opening their cameras. Okay lang yan kapag feel natin hindi tayo fresh lahat for this video. Ayan, nakikita na natin si Lolo at Lola. Yung iba. Hello po! Nice to meet you po! <laughs> Ayan, I think the others are opening their cam. Um, to facilitate the photo opportunity, I think we have Ms. Prijan. It's Noriel po. Ah, I think, okay, sige. Noriel, Ms. I think there there is... Hello? Am I audible po? Is yes, yes, you're audible. audible. Okay, so we have three pages po. So I request everyone to smile. Okay, well, like to okay. especially request the members of Section 1 to please open their cams. Ayan. So lahat ng Section 1 mag-open daw ng cams. <laughs> Thank 
Okay, I guess the others already opened their cameras. Sige lang, kahit forehead lang yung makita natin, kakaya na yan. Okay, Ali? I mean, Noriel? For page one, one, two, three, smile. Okay, for page two, remain smiling. One, two, three, smile. And for the last page, one, two, three, smile. Okay, na po. Thank you. Thank you, thank everyone. You, thank you so much, everyone. So, ayun nga, just want to reiterate our, our gratitude for, for Prof. Robles for earlier. So, again, I think Ma'am Ka will call in again, Ma'am Ka, for the announcement and awarding of certificates for the organizers of the event. Yeah, and so thank you once again, everyone, for coming, especially to our uh, to the learners of our NSTP students who have been journeying with them in terms of their uh, community service hours. So I'd just like to share um, uh, a few of the the reminders, okay, for for our um, NSTP uh, activities. Ayan. so. Uh, please allow me to share screen. So yeah, so per our um, uh, the the previous meetings that we agreed on. So parang I am looking forward to you uh, showing your forty eight hours, de right? for your um, actual uh, proposal uh, implementation as well as the twelve hours for your um, consultation, for your input, for your preparations and all. So yeah, so parang it's uh, the, the total of 60 hours is there so that we can uh, at least exceed a bit of the minimum requirement of um, 54 hours which is required by law. So yeah, so um, uh, I know that you have been working hard on these uh, implementations, you've been spending time with your learners and even yung attendance nyo with um, this webinar and for inviting people uh, to learn more about the growth mindset uh, it will be acknowledged doon sa ating mga um, the, the Google Sheets that you have uh, presented uh, to me for checking. Yeah. So, um, yeah. About, uh, so, so this will be like one of the, the, set, uh, the last uh, meetings for, for our NSTP sync meeting. So I think we'll just have one final wrap up for, for everything. But um, uh, I'd like to thank you for pouring your heart and soul into your proposals and into your implementation. Because again, this is uh, one of the things that I feel is really in our control in terms of, you know, actualizing our our love for for the Philippines, yung parang uh, pagmamahal sa inang bayan aside from casting our votes, de ba? So parang um, one of the things that has helped me with my elections anxiety is the fact that um, people have been really active in in completing their um, literacy proposals, and I really think that you know volunteering is actually. Uh, one of the ways that um, we can concretize and we can show them na parang ang, ang pagiging UP student, hindi lang siya angas, hindi lang siya pagrarali, di ba? It's really more of uh, serving the country, di ba? So parang, um, and uh, as early as first year, di ba? Parang we're already given this this actual chance to 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 show it, di ba? And, and not, not just talk about it, not just post memes, and not just post uh, um, Facebook statuses, di ba? So parang ayon. Um, thank you for pouring your heart in into these uh, projects because um, ayon. Doon talaga natin siya mapapangatawanan yung pagiging scholar ng bayan para sa bayan and not just bayan as like a general uh, concept but the people around us diba? and even the people that uh, we love and well sometimes may not necessarily agree with <laughs> so yan so uh, again thank you for um, 
thank you for joining with me in uh, in NSTP and I hope that you have get, uh, you have gotten to learn more about yourself diba? your your convictions um uh, your values diba? um uh, in in the entire uh, school year that we have spent diba? as um uh, people belonging to the National Service Training Program of uh, the University of the Philippines, Visaya. So uh, I would also like to acknowledge the uh, people who have helped me create and uh, organize this webinar. Yeah, so uh, I, I would not have been able to mount this whole thing for all of us, especially with our visitors, our guests, our speaker without their help. So uh, I have to give credit where credit is due. So I would also like to uh, present the certificates of appreciation to our organizing committee. So this certificate of appreciation is awarded to Frisian Dailene T. Francisco for the time and effort she put into organizing the webinar entitled Flourish, Filipino Students Facing Challenges with a Growth Mindset, given this 14th day of May 2022 via the online platform Zoom. This will be signed by our NSTP Director, Professor Nathaniel G. Samson, and yours truly as your LDS instructor. So Frisian has been in charge of um, the stage managing, if you will, of this entire thing. Lahat ng videos, audio, the slides, and uh, the projecting of the slides. Thank you very much, uh, Frisian. So next uh, certificate, please. I'd also like to acknowledge the contributions of J.M. Celerio, who has also uh, given much time in the graphics of, uh, of our um, our webinar, especially yung pop mats natin, and for thinking of the theme, sila ni Liana, actually. So, uh, thank you, John Michael or JM. We also would like to award this to Kyla Anna Marie Sab and Sabtal, our very dynamic host. Ayan. So, yun, uh, I know that there will be a lot of uh, hosting opportunities for them, ni CK. So, ayan, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing more of uh, Kyla in, in the future webinars of CM. Thank you, Kyla. And we also have the same certificate of appreciation to Liana Marie M. Benigay, who has also been working with JM for the, the graphics and the slides for this webinar. Okay, next uh, certificate, please. And of course, we have Noriel Aliana Sandigan, who has also been active in um, the scripts in the, the chat box as well. So thank you, Noriel. Uh, meron pa ba? Did I forget anyone else? Ayan, sige. So, thank you uh, everyone for joining us. Um, we already have the uh, link for the feedback form. So, again, uh, the certificates of uh, attendance will be available upon request should you need them. So, I think we also have uh, instructions for that in our feedback form. And thank you once again uh, to our speaker, Professor Robles, all the learners or the people who have not been part of this class but chose to attend. Thank you for joining us and discovering what the growth mindset is and uh, thank you also um, to the members of this class as well yeah, yeah. thank you so much ma'am and i would like to remind everyone to fill in the feedback form as sent in our chat box should you want to receive an e-certificate for the event well personally this week began with news that i believe broke the heart of most of us here but just like what the leader i look up to said we all have to move forward with hope and that is also something that we have learned this afternoon. Once again, I am Kyla Sabdal. I vow to keep on speaking and standing up for what I believe in. And together, may we all carry within us a hopeful heart, a dedicated soul, and a growth mindset for ourselves and para sa ating inang bayan. Thank you so much, everyone, and Hiraya Manawari. So as we end, sing with us the UP Naming Mahal.
Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, everyone. You may now start to leave our Zoom room. Thank you again, uh, Kaila, Noriel, Frishan, JM, Liana. Thank you also, Pop Mom. Sige. Thank you, Pop Mom. Okay. Sige, so, uh, Ma'am Ojil, thank you so much. Uh, nakaalis na yata siya. Okay. Sige, so I'll just, uh, uh, ano, um, and this in a bit. So uh, I will see you in the group chat from time to time. <laughs> Bye, everyone.